Yeah, hi there, welcome to tuxacha.com and in the today's little video tutorial we want to take a look on another 2018 software it's Aurora HDR which for the first time is available for Windows user 2. So I downloaded a test version which is available for everyone installed and and just let's take a look into the software. Okay, I installed Aurora HDR 2018. There is a plugin available for Photoshop and Lightroom, but the plugins are not installed by default. But since my laptop here only has eight gigabyte of RAM, we are starting the standalone version. Okay, we open the images, we take, um, three TIFFs from a regular exposure bracketing seri series with the plug-in you could also use raw files from your camera now he gets those uh, three images and we must check alignment because those images were captured not using a tripod and we click create HDR and make it a full display and now we have to wait a little while while he is done alignment and rendering the HDR image okay and he now has rendered a first preview of the HDR but take a look at the handling first here on the bottom side you got all the presets if available in Aurora HDR and if you click on categories you might notice that there is a whole bunch of them included in the program and you got here a before after view and here a split view where you can display different areas of your image here you got the history but it's empty now because we haven't done anything here you got the crop tool with this one you can hide the presets and make the HDR image a lot larger and with this one you can hide the development panel on the right side okay let's take a preset like a realistic one he has now to calculate the resulting image again and as you might notice this tool has the ability to do the overblend with the final HDR image with a certain percentage okay we'll leave it just this way with the preset now here you got a whole bunch of settings for the development of your HDR image. New there is a HDR balance which is sort of clarity. Maybe you play around with that in some with some of your images. And another thing is the HDR denoise. That is if your exposure bracketing series is done with high ISO so you can reduce noise in your final image. There is also a top and bottom tuning that is sort of like a graduated filter separately for the bottom, in this case the foreground of the picture and the sky area of your image where you can adjust exposure, contrast and even the color tone, vibrance and so on. Go down to the bottom there is another tool called dodge and burning where you can fill in certain areas of your pictures he switches back and now you notice I have a brush and here I can determine either if I want to lighten or darken certain areas we just want to darken certain areas and if I want to darken here the foreground I just paint over it and you might notice that this is darkened pretty much you can overlay it with a certain percentage here with the strengths and reduce this part this should be good enough for this little video we do a complete reset on this one okay 
we do a done. And another feature which is worth mentioning is that our HDR is able to handle layers. I can add here a new adjustment layer. And if I click here on the brush and click here on this little eye icon, this will color those areas which are part of the mask. In red tone you probably know that if you're familiar with the Lightroom or Photoshop. And now you can see here that the mask has the white part on the bottom. So these uh, parts of the image can be influenced with uh, other filters like uh, vibrance, exposure, contrast, you just name it, while the black part of the layer will have no changes applied to them. A special thing about those layers, you can define all kinds of layers for certain parameters we want to change in the image, but if you say you're done with your picture and save it as a TIFF file again, you can't save the layers. It will, will result in a regular TIFF file without those layers. So you're, you're not able to save those layers from Aurora HDR and maybe change them. Yeah, okay, that was my little look at the software HDR. There occurred a little problem because every output from the software, either with the Lightroom plugin or standalone, is 8-bit TIFF only. That is a little bit of a no-go for a software like this and I hope that the software company will fix it immediately with a update. That was my little tutorial and if you like place any comments or questions into the comments. Till the next time, ciao, tux auch.